Hello friends, welcome back to Flight Level 070. I am Utkarsh and uh, today let's discuss an emergency descent on an Airbus A320. Emergency descent is a maneuver in which the aircraft is made to descend at the highest possible rate of descent and uh, this can be done to achieve several purposes. The most common reason why we perform e emergency descent or even while you're training you will go through it is depressurization but there can be several reasons why you might need to execute an emergency descent and to make this interactive I would love if you can uh, write your comments down below on what can be the possible scenarios where you think using an emergency descent will be very useful okay according to the Airbus A320 flight crew operating manual only the immediate actions of emergency descent are part of memory items. A lot of times there are confusions where people tend to follow the whole procedure out of memory but uh, the FCOM says that only the immediate actions are part of memory. So I'll recap the immediate actions of an emergency descent. Firstly, don the oxygen masks on and establish communication with the second crew member. Then announce on PA emergency descent. And then the pilot monitoring will switch signs to on, all signs to on from the overhead panel. And then the pilot flying will initiate the emergency descent. The very first thing he will go to the FCU or the altitude selector knob and turn left and pull. Then go to the heading selector and turn left or right and pull. And then pull the speed. Once he's done that, see the change in the FMA and read the FMA since it's mandatory and check if auto thrust is engaged check for thrust idle if auto thrust is not engaged for any reason get the thrust levers back to idle once that is done then he will use the speed brakes to increase the rate of descent but you need to be careful here because uh, the VLS tends to increase as soon as you start applying the speed brakes so Imagine the my instructor told me to imagine that this is your bump which is your current airspeed and this is the barking dog that is the VLS so as soon as your as soon as the dog is trying to bite your bump you try to reduce the amount of speed brakes so that uh, the VLS decreases and if uh, the VLS goes above your airspeed uh, the autopilot will disconnect and uh, then you'll have a lot of trouble so these are parts of the immediate actions of an emergency descent and only this much is to be done by memory rest is to be done by the paper procedure ecam procedure whatever okay once the descent has been established the pilot flying will continue to his second loop where he will reach out for the altitude selector knob and fine tune his altitude to either flight level 100 or the minimum allowable altitude at that point in time then he will select the appropriate heading and uh, for speed you can either select uh, in case of uh, no structural failure you will select the maximum speed that will be VMO or MMO and in case of structural failure you will let the speed remain to the same speed where you pulled for the emergency descent and uh, then the pilot monitoring will start with the ECAM procedures or the paper procedures According to the FCOM paper procedure, the pilot monitoring will select the engine mode selector to ignition. It will notify the ATC, declare an emergency if there is an emergency and state the intentions. Then he will also consider squawking 7700 and uh, there are a few notes there in the FCOM which suggest that uh, for the oxygen mask, you establish communications and you turn the flow of the oxygen mask from 100% to normal flow so that uh, you have enough oxygen to, su to be supplied for the whole emergency descent profile and the other uh, note that was given in the FCOM is that uh, to avoid a lot of uh, background noise of oxygen breathing you switch from int the int selector to off so that uh, there is no disturbance of the breathing from the oxygen mask to each other then uh, the in case the cabin altitude is greater than 14,000, the passenger oxygen supply will be manually on by the pilot monitoring. And uh, 
procedure can be different according to the situations but uh, the memory items will remain the same so the, uh, the immediate actions of an emergency descent will need to be applied always whenever you plan to perform an emergency descent. Uh, I'll go and perform this maneuver on the, uh, the flight simulator and uh, I'll discuss more about the procedure in the flight simulator as I perform it. So let's head to the flight simulator. Hello everyone, welcome to the flight simulator. Here we are. We're cruising at uh, flight level 320 and uh, flying at Mach decimal 77. We are flying from Victor India Delta Papa to Victor Alpha Bravo Bravo and uh, we'll be demonstrating an emergency descent here. I was trying to see if we could uh, play with the systems and uh, create any failure that would cause us to initiate an emergency descent but this simulator doesn't allow me to play with the system so I guess we'll just have to imagine that we have some kind of a decompression and the captain makes the decision to initiate an emergency descent. Stay with me and uh, enjoy. Captain, I'm noticing some uh, pressurization problem here. I think it's a slow decompression. Emergency descent. How do you read, Captain? Video forward. I announce on PA. Emergency descent. Do not stay in level trees. As pilot flying, I'll head for the FCU. My instructor told me a good way of setting up the FCU for an emergency descent. So you sing the procedure in the mine. So you sing turn left, pull for the heading, turn left or right, and then pull and for speed, pull. Thrust idle, open descent, heading, all blue, flight level 1, flight 0, blue. Check. After completing the first loop, we will go ahead and apply speed brakes. And uh, while applying speed brakes, we need to be careful because the VLS tends to increase. And at such high altitudes, the boundary layer is uh, too close. So we need to make sure that uh, the VLS does not go above the current speed and to demonstrate this I will slow down to about 220 knots so that the VLS comes into view because in the simulator the boundary layer is not that accurate. So remember the dog and your bum. So as soon as the dog tries to bite your bum, reduce the amount of speed brake. And uh, I'll open the flight controls page so that you can see more precisely the application of the speed brakes. Okay, so as we slow down, you see the flight controls speed brake there. And here VLS comes into view. So now when I start applying speed brakes, the VLS will tend to increase. So let's begin. And if you can see, the VLS increased a little bit there. But this is much more marked in the real aircraft and the level D simulators. So you need to be very careful while applying speed brakes so that the VLS does not go above your current airspeed. And there, when I apply the speed brakes, the VLS goes up. Let's begin with the second loop. I delayed the second loop just to demonstrate how the VLS works. So 
So you will set up the aircraft for the second loop. Let's begin with the paper procedure. Engine mode selector, ignition. ATC, notify. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Flight level 070 is experiencing decompression. Executing emergency descent 40 miles southeast of Utah. Descending through flight level 270 for flight level 100 heading 100 will advise when ready. Flight level 070, copy Mayday. Advise while crossing flight level 120. Rinko flight level 070. UTC transponder 7700, consider. I will squawk 7700. Max flight level 100 or NEA. If cabin altitude is greater than 14,000 feet, passenger oxygen mask manually on. As I had described during the initial brief about the int switch that was mentioned in the FCOM. So from int you would get the switch to the neutral position that is the off so that you cannot listen to each other otherwise there is a lot of breathing noise as you can hear here in the flight simulator demonstration. So to avoid that background noise of breathing you would get the switch to neutral. Also you would uh, select uh, your uh, flow to normal so that uh, you do not exhaust all the oxygen during the descent profile. Okay, so let's see what happens if I increase the speed to the rate of descent. So I increase the speed. As soon as I increase speed, the aircraft will pitch down and the rate of descent will increase. Since it's in the open descent mode, the aircraft is pitching for speed. Let's further increase the speed to 300 knots. So, rate of descent is increasing further to about 5000 feet per minute. Although this can only be done if there is no structural failure of the aircraft. If you have structural failure, you will try to maintain the speed where the damage occurred. If there is no structural damage, you will fly at VMO, MMO and the VMO is 350. So let's see what is the rate of descent when we fly at 350. Uh, it's more than 6000 feet per minute, 7000 feet per minute there. It's a lot of rate of descent. And this can only be done if you have no structural failure. As you can see, we're pitching down about 8 degrees. If you look at the horizon, look at the sides. Okay, we are about to approach flight level 100. 
Flight level 070 ascending through flight level 120 for flight level 100. Roger that flight level 070. You could look at the airport options to see the closest airport where you could land. In our case, Victor India Delta Papa is the best option. Speed all star. Check. Okay, for the recovery now, you would retard the speed brakes. Since I did not retard the speed brakes, I have a flight control warning that the speed brakes are still out. As soon as you see all star, you retract the speed brakes. Since we're reaching 10,000, we can remove oxygen mask. Safe to remove oxygen mask. Yeah, I would probably slow down to 250 knots and request the vectors to land at Vitter India Delta Papa. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. As I said earlier, it's not more of a procedure but more of demonstration of what and how the aircraft behaves in the different aspects when we apply speed brakes, when we increase the speed or decrease the speed. Thank you so much everyone for watching the video. I hope you like the way I demonstrated this procedure and uh, please let me know in your comments down below what can be the improvements here what mistakes did I make and uh, your future suggestions on what kind of videos would you like to see from me and don't forget to like comment and subscribe